Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have f of x, a function whose derivative equals two times its inverse. So when I write f to the power negative one of x, I don't mean the reciprocal of f of x, but rather the functional inverse of f of x. We've done a similar problem before, I think, a while ago. I can't remember exactly when. If you can find that link, that would be really awesome if we could share it. But I think we've done this problem without the two, like a function whose derivative equals its inverse. Think about it, and I'm pretty sure uh, you'll find it anywhere, somewhere. I don't know. But this is a little different because we this time we have the derivative equals two times the inverse function. So I just introduced the two to make it more fun. And let's see if we can solve a problem like this. Now, think about a function whose derivative equals its own inverse. You probably know that, right? Okay. But this time, I'm sorry, I meant to say a function whose derivative equals itself. It's easy to find, right? You can find it. Can you find a function whose derivative equals two times the function? Absolutely. That's also easy to do. But this time, it's the inverse function. So how do we do that, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, you can't solve this problem by normal means, which means like you can't really like turn it into a normal differential equation and use the techniques, or you can't just treat it as a functional equation. You can isolate f inverse and write it as f inverse of x equals f prime divided by two, and then apply f on both sides on the left. So like f of something equals f of something else. Because if a equals b, this implies f of a equals f of b, right? This is the well-definedness of a function. In this case, you would be getting x from here, but how do you deal with something like this? That's super duper complicated. We don't even know what f is, so how do we deal with the derivative, right? So let's go ahead and approach this problem differently. So we kind of need to think outside the box, which means, or is it out of the box? Something like that. So we're going to assume a certain form for f of x. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to assume, like, think about it. What kind of function f could f be? Is it trigonometric? Is it exponential? Is it inverse trigonometric? What is it? Is it logarithmic? Is it a polynomial? What can it be? So I'm going to assume in this case a power function. I'm not saying polynomial because the power function doesn't have to have an integer or non-negative integer power, like polynomials. So in other words, we're going to assume that f can be written as a times x to the power b. It could also be n, but n is usually saved for polynomials or reserved, rather. So I'm going to use b in this case. So our goal is going to be to find the values of a and b so that this equation is satisfied. How do we know this type of equation satisfies it? Well, here's the thought. If you take the inverse of a power function, you kind of get another power function. Make sense? I hope you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start by differentiating this function. If you differentiate x to the b, you're going to have a b in the front, so it's going to be a b times x to the power b minus 1. Great. That's the f prime. What about f inverse? To find f inverse, we're going to go ahead and set this equal to y. And don't ask why. And then we're going to try to isolate x from here. So first, set this equal to y and then divide both sides by a. And then raise both sides to the power 1 over b. And that should give you x, of course, under certain conditions. And we're going to go ahead and now isolate x from here, which is going to be y over a to the power 1 over b. Of course, this is the same as f inverse of y because we replace x with y or solve for x in terms of y. And then from here, we can write f inverse of x, just change the variable. It's going to be x over a to the power 1 over b. And guess what? We want this to equal f prime. So this is f prime. This is f inverse. And we want them to be equal. How is that possible? Let's go ahead and write an equation. A, B, X to the power B minus 1 should equal X over A to the power 1 over B. To make things a little easier, we can do the following. First of all, this is 1 over A times X to the power 1 over B. So you can kind of separate the coefficient and the variable and write this as follows. A, B times X to the power B minus 1 equals 1 over a 
to the power 1 over b times x to the power 1 over b. The good thing about it is if these two power functions are equal, so think about it this way. If you have something like m times x to the n equals k times x to the p, doesn't this imply that m equals k and n equals p? And the reason behind that is very simple. m over k times x to the power n minus p is supposed to equal 1. We have a function that has a variable on the left, but on the right-hand side, we have a constant. The only way this can happen is... Uh, by having x to the power 0, which means n equals p, and of course, this needs to be 1 as well. Of course, k is not 0, so on and so forth, right? Great, so from here, we can safely say that ab is equal to 1 over a to the power 1 over b. How nice is that, right? That's not the best part. This is the best part. x to the power b minus 1 should equal x to the power 1 minus b, I mean 1 over b. So these two things should be equal, which means the exponents are equal, which means b minus 1 equals 1 over b. And this is really, really the best part. You'll see in a little bit why it's really cool. Cross multiply. Of course, b can't be 0. We know that. b squared minus b is equal to 1. b squared minus b minus 1 is equal to 0. If you solve this quadratic, you're going to get b equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 5. Uh-oh, the golden ratio emerges again. Now, we got two b values. One of them is 1 plus 4 root 5 over 2, and the other one is 1 minus root 5 over 2. Which one are we going to use? Probably both, right? The question is, how do you find a from here? That's the million-dollar question, right? So we could try a couple different things. First of all, you can replace b with what it is and try to solve for a. Maybe I can just raise both sides to the power b. Is that going to make things easier? I'm not exactly sure. But well, we could probably do this. We can write this as a, b equals a to the power negative 1 over b because 1 over a is a to the power negative 1. And then we can try to isolate maybe b from here. Can we do that? Try to isolate b. It can be written as a to the power negative 1 over b divided by a, which means negative 1 over b minus 1. And then finally, uh, of course, we can write this as negative 1 minus b over b, and finally, we can raise both sides to something so we, I can, I, we can isolate a from here. So a is going to be b to the power, we got to raise both sides to the reciprocal of this, which is b over negative 1 minus b. Because when you do that, you know what happens? These two cancel out. So you get the a in terms of b. This is really cool. Uh, can we do the opposite? Probably not. And it's not a good idea because we have the values of b, which we can directly plug in. Let me just do one, uh, one of them because the other one is going to be fairly you know, easy to do, similar. So let's write this one more time. b to the power b over negative b minus 1. I just switched them around. This is the value of a in terms of b. Which one should we use? I don't know. Probably, since we're negating it, I would probably use this one. Let's use that one. So now we can write a as b to the power 1 minus root 5 over 2. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate this first. So what is negative b over b plus 1? Yes, this is, I think, better because we're going to have to uh, kind of negate both top and bottom. Negative b is just going to be root 5 minus 1 over 2. And b plus 1 is going to be 1 minus root 5 over 2 plus 1. And that should be root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by... Uh, 1 minus root 5 plus 2, that's kind of 3 minus root 5 over 2. The 2's cancel out, and we end up with root 5 minus 1 over 3 minus root 5 as the value of this exponent right here. It's not the answer. We still have to use this. So a equals b to the power, which is 1 minus root 5 over 2, to the power root 5 minus 1 over 3 minus root 5. How nice, right? You can definitely ask to evaluate this using a calculator. No big deal. But that's what it is, exactly. Now, we can go ahead and write down one of the solutions. f of x, remember, we assumed it was going to be in the form a times x to the power b. And we know both of the values. a is 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the power root 5 minus 1 over 3 minus root 5. Hopefully, I did not make a mistake because that would be really crazy. And then times x to the power b. And b is a little simpler, 1 minus root 5 over 2. And guess what? Can you believe this? This is a function whose derivative equals 2 times its inverse. If you don't believe that,
go ahead and test it out, plug it in. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B I, and bye-bye.